Hi guys, um, here's some support to help you with your assignment three stuff. Assignment three, there was lots for you to work on, but let's go through it. So, first set of tasks was asking you to review some stuff, get some information, and start completing um, a whole bunch of things around where um, various bird species and other species in the New Zealand bush um, were and what the relationships with each other were. So let, let, let's go through um, all the various parts. So um, if we go down to the bottom, the first thing it was asking you to do was to work your way through the worksheet regarding the various organisms that are present there. So you needed to get clarity around what's eating a kiwi or a kereru and a tui, and we'll do that. Okay, so when we think about a kiwi, lots of mammal predators can get in there and cause all manner of problems for it. However, principally, it's going to feed on things like small invertebrates, so small insect species, grubs, that type of thing. Um, and you're also um, asked to find additional information about that. Um, and again, it's just helping you develop a deeper understanding of the uniqueness of some of those um, New Zealand native plants. Um, your big thing here is that um, yeah, kiwis are pretty small, but um, they're flightless, they're highly vulnerable. Um, to these mammal predators and they also I mean additional things you could have mentioned the amount of time it takes them to reproduce their reproductive rates are incredibly slow um, often just one egg a season you know it's which compared to something like a mammal it's way way down and means that they are really vulnerable to predation um, we've got keru which is the wood pigeon um, highly vulnerable again to predators cats possums stoats all of that particularly when nesting its eggs are also highly vulnerable to that um, again, really, really associated with the eating of various seeds and those seed species that it eats more broadly, it will be a disperser of those. Um, it's an endemic species, so that's always helpful to know. Um, and we'll come back to terms like what endemic and native mean in subsequent assignments. Tui, um, really good example of a pollinating species. So it will get lots and lots of nectar from native flowers like the potocower. Um, but highly vulnerable again to um, mammal mammal species. Um, again, some interesting stuff in around where it is or what it does. Um, and so long as you're reviewing the websites that have given you that and you're putting in stuff that just again gives you greater insight into its role in the ecosystem or some of the strategies that we're using to try and protect it, it's all well and good. Um, invertebrates, many and varied species would fit underneath these. So um, you're going to have lots of insect species, obviously, um, spiders um, as well. Um, just so you're clear, a spider and an insect are not the same thing. They're different um, versions of invertebrate. Um, but if you're looking at that, in, um, insects of six legs, spiders of eight, kind of a thing. Anyway, um, the big thing is, is that they're fed on by loads of species, um, and that will include some of those um, invasive pests, but it will also include many of those bird species. Um, where you find them traditionally on the ground, um, they're very often decomposers, and that decomposition is really critical in terms of nutrient cycling. Um, bit of an aside where we're talking about crayfish, snails, and octopuses, so I'm, I'm I wouldn't be going here, I would be talking about invertebrates based in the New Zealand ecosystem. You then have some plant species, so the Miro, and obviously there's an association between Miro and Keruru, um, and that is absolutely critical um, in terms of them being seed, dis uh, the, um, Keru being a seed disperser for that. There'll be other associations of other plants with Miro. Um, it's a nice statement about how high it grows, so it's a big feature in the Zoom bush. You've got the Tawa. Um, tawa is going to basically, again, produce large fruits, um, but it relies solely on the Keru, and that's critical. That's why a Keru is a keystone species. If you lose your Keru, you're going to lose your Tawa, and that's a problem. Okay. Kofi tree. So again, two is huge involvement in, in terms of that. The Kereru again, um, lo lots of um, strong involvement there around um, pollination. Um, and again, unique cultural value um, in terms of the Kofi. Um, strong associations in terms of Maori culture. Stokes, that's vicious, vicious. They eat the brainstem of um, lots and lots of um well anything they can really get to the brainstem of they're they're pretty vicious um so they're predators um of so cats dogs and human beings will um not have stoats around obviously we don't feed on them um as but we do treat them as pests and um lots of baiting to try and bring down their populations they reproduce at an incredible rate 
the their main prey are basically anything they can eat. They'll go after insects, they'll go after rats, they'll go after mice, they'll go after birds. They are vicious. Um, and in terms of the extinction of many species and the deforestation of the New Zealand bush, they have a critical role in that. Possums. Now, possums, um, you'll get cats and dogs will go after possums. You need to understand that possums in large part are browsers. So they will go after eating lots of the leaves and the um the shrubs that make up the New Zealand bush, but they eat them aggressively and to the point where the, you massively impact on the growth of those actual uh, of that forest life. And that leads to major problems in terms of that wider ecosystem. That's why they're such a uh, pernicious pest. They're not, they're not good. Um, and then you've got the uh, rat and rats eat blooming everything, really. Um, and because they eat bloom and everything, um, they are absolutely vicious in terms of their impact, in terms of multiple species. They have predators, um, humans, cats, dogs, cats don't like rats, giant shock. Okay, um, you've got some names of particular rodent species, it's good to go from there. So that's your first one, okay? So making sure you work through the actual um, worksheet there. So then complete the ecosystem. So once we've done that, let's go have a look at what the ecosystem sheet looks like. So yeah, that's all in. We've done a complete the ecosystem. And then what have we got? Um, our next one, using the worksheet, create a food web showing the ecosystem. Well, here's one someone made earlier. So let's have a look at it. Any second now. So we've got the various relationships between um, the animals um, and plants in this space. What we need to do is to clearly identify what they are. Now, I can infer it from the diagram, but you need to be able to as well. So what we can see here is that, yes, we have the sun. Sun isn't a living thing, but it is acting as the source of energy for three of our producers. We then have an involvement um, with these. So the caribou will obviously be eating those seeds um, and there'll be pollination from that. But so you state what that involvement actually is, and then you have your wider predation. So the key thing here is, yes, um, you are showing energy flows, but be specific about how those energy flows are actually occurring because it will help you understand the nature of the relationship. The other thing as well here, we can include things like um, possums in their herbivory um, of some of those uh, plant species. Um, and we also need to be making sure we've got an idea around the predation um, of one species to another. But that's, that's a solid diagram in terms of showing it's just lacking detail in terms of labels. Please make sure you've got such labels on your work. Okay, what else have we got? So we've done the ecosystem, we've done the food webs, we then have our extended responses. So you'll notice in assignment three, there are a couple of, it'll load in a second, any minute now, um, there are a couple of longer extended pieces of work, which are, let's go for a look. There we go, right here. Okay, so. First things, you're given some scenarios. What happens? You increase TUI numbers. Recognize what happens with TUIs. TUIs are pollinators of kofi trees. So an increase in terms of their pollination is going to result in um, the number of kofi trees basically going up because there's going to be more pollination of them. And that's going to mean that other living things with associations with the kofi tree will have their numbers increased as well. So the increase um, in TUI results in an increase in Kofi, um, results in an increase in seeds, and that has a wider impact on everything else that feeds on seeds. So as is correctly described in this answer, things like possums and stoats and rats would also increase because the birds would basically be in a larger population. So this is boom for the wider population. Need to be mindful, however, um, of that interconnectedness, okay? Um, and again, that means that it's not a static thing. If one thing goes up, other things will go up and then you'll have some downstream effects as a consequence of that. Second one, clearing of native bush. So that's stripping back the forest. We, in we clear out the forest. We're going to massively decrease the number of birds that can survive in that space because their food source is gone. That will have an impact on predators. So we've got clearly linkage of the effects of that. Now cessation, meaning stopping of predator control methods, you're going to see a massive, massive decrease in the bird population, not as is said in this document, an increase. Cessation means stop. So if we stop predator control methods, we're not trying to bait and we're not trying to trap, 
rats and possums and those type of things. If we're not trying to trap rats and possums, the possums and the rats and the stoats and all of those things will go up and the impact on the bird population is that it will go down. Okay, so some scenarios there. Okay, that was the penultimate part of this task. The last part of this task was the discussion question. So let's have a look at the discussion question. What does a food web tell us about the relationships in an ecosystem? It shows us the interconnectedness of the organisms within a community. It shows us the transfer of energy, of energy from um, producers to herbivores to carnivores. So it gives us an insight into the level of complexity in an ecosystem. It shows us that food web um, and it shows us the where the energy is flowing. Be mindful that it doesn't clearly show things like where your keystone species are. Um, things like who's a decomposer, things like who is a seed disperser, who is a pollinator. Those things are not always obvious from a food chain so, or from a food web. OK, second question. Why do New Zealand native birds, particularly the tui and the kereroo, have such an important role? Right there. Pollinators and seed dispersers. So absolutely, the kereroo has a critical role in seed dispersal of things like the mirror, the mirror tree. Tui has a critical role as being a pollinator of trees like the um, kofi tree. That means that if you remove them or there is a decrease in their populations, pollination and seed dispersal does not occur. And that means that it will reduce the reproduction of plant species. And any organism that has an association with a miro or a kofi or, or any other tree that is um, pollinated or seed dispersed by either of those two will be negatively impacted upon that. OK, so we have a version of that in this answer. The key difference here to really bed this in, tag it to the role and the downstream and upstream effects. What it's going to mean for the organisms further up in the food chain and below the food chain if we start losing our plant species. OK, what would occur if stoats and rats and possums are eradicated? This is the same. Um, this is the opposite question to what if we stopped pest control? OK, what if we massively up pest control? and we get rid of them? Well, the answer is we're gonna massively increase the bird populations and the populations in that tree. Key idea here is why we've removed our predator, we've removed our threat to our keystone species. You need to explain why or be able to have a good understanding of why, okay? What could possibly occur if the population of stoats increased greatly? Well, we've identified it. We're gonna have a decrease in our bird population and our tree population because they're a predator of those bird species. And by removing those bird species, we remove our seed dispersers and our pollinators, which means there's going to be an impact on the reproduction of those tree species. And that will have an impact on um, those tree species over time in terms of their population. So some real depth here. The key thing here in the discussion question is explaining and really hitting the why. The key idea, hit the therefore and the because in any answer here explain and then explain again why is this happening and what does that mean and why does it matter okay you get that you're in a really strong place okay that's assignment three